Days of Our Lives spoilers hint at Nicole D. Mara's impending return, promising viewers an anticipated comeback around February 16. However, speculation arises about her whereabouts, with hints suggesting she might be in Italy instead of Salem due to Holly Jonas' situation. Despite the distance, romantic gestures between Nicole and E.J. DiMera are expected, particularly as E.J. goes to great lengths to assist Holly, even moving Nicole to tears with his kindness. As Holly's condition shows improvement, E.J.'s heartfelt efforts continue, including thoughtful Valentine's Day gestures. Their bond deepens amidst Holly's struggles, showcasing a special connection despite uncertainties about their romantic future. Meanwhile, the Horton House Blaze storyline unfolds with Clyde Weston's retaliatory actions, posing threats to Chad DeMera's loved ones. Amidst the chaos, tensions rise between characters like Chad, Everett Lynch, and Clyde, leading to dramatic confrontations and perilous situations. As the storyline intensifies, secrets unravel, alliances form, and characters face unforeseen challenges, promising suspense and intrigue for Days of Our Lives fans. Welcome to a pastime shows, where the drama unfolds and the stories captivate. Join us as we delve into the intriguing world of A Days of Our Lives, revealing the untold tales and hidden truths behind the headlines. Days of Our Lives spoilers, Holly's stepdad goes above and above as Nicole returns following EJ's astounding gift. According to spoilers for Days of Our Lives, Nicole DiMera will soon make a comeback. Given that Nicole is once again mentioned in spoilers for Days of Our Lives, it appears that viewers of the show might anticipate seeing Nicole return on television around February 16. Naturally, there's a chance Nicole won't be in Salem when we see her again. If Nicole decides not to leave Holly Jonas' side at her new institution, she may be spotted on a set in Italy instead. However, since there would still be romantic festivities in progress by Valentine's Day, Nicole might take a quick plane trip back to Salem to visit E.J. DiMera. It's possible that E.J. will fly to Nicole in place of him and add to his recent repertoire of incredible great gestures. Nevertheless, according to Day's teasers, Nicole will be moved to tears by E.J.'s kindness and the consideration with which he has assisted Holly. Nicole may receive updates on new physicians and treatments that E.J. has covered, or information similar to that. Although Holly is still unconscious, her loved ones were encouraged to hear that she had made remarkable progress recently. Holly might receive a Valentine's Day gift from E.J. that includes her favorite band's song or something else she might be able to detect, even while she is unconscious. In any case, Day's spoilers indicate that Nicole will become emotional as she expresses her appreciation, which could result in some touching moments when they get back together with E.J. Nicole will always be appreciative of E.J.'s assistance because he has truly gone above and beyond for Holly's sake. Even if Nicole and EJ aren't really in love, they still have a special bond and show that they care for one another. But because of Jude Brady's paternity and the Sloan Peterson Brady storyline with the stolen baby, major romantic changes are in the works. Be sure to tune in for all the shocking revelations and dramatic consequences. According to spoilers for Days of Our Lives, E.J., Nicole, Eric Brady, and other characters are still in for some surprises. Days of Our Lives spoilers, the air date of Horton House Blaze, Clyde's retaliatory message, has been revealed. According to Days of Our Lives spoilers, Chad DiMera might soon come to the conclusion that it was a mistake to agitate Clyde Weston. On the February 6 episode, Clyde was already having a bad day because of the news of the narcotics bust at the warehouse. That raid resulted in numerous arrests, the death of one drug dealer, and significant losses for Clyde in terms of lost merchandise. Clyde was not amused by the taunting of Chad and Everett Lynch, nor did he appreciate their threats to have him killed. But in that conversation, Clyde made some threats of his own and made it plain that he could target the people that Chad and Everett care about. Though Clyde's remarks were dismissed by Everett, Clyde has demonstrated that he is more than prepared to carry out whatever threats he makes. 
we cannot overlook the timing of the impending Horton House fire in light of all of that. Thanks to previews from days, we finally know when we can expect that fire to air on February 12. Naturally, that implies that as part of this week's major days cliffhanger, the fire will start in the February 9th episode. Along with Doug Williams, Julie Williams, Thomas DeMera, and Charlotte DeMera, Chad will ultimately find himself in grave peril. Will the Horton House catch fire because of Clyde's actions? After Days gives this spicy, smoky touch, Chad will definitely have to suspect that. Fans of Days of Our Lives can anticipate updates from Chad about what transpired that evening to Everett following the fire. Chad will most likely then admit that he believes Clyde gave the stern instruction. Fortunately, Doug and Julie will find safety, as will Chad and his children, after the house is too damaged to occupy, look for all of them to remain with Maggie Kiriakis. Keep checking back because teasers for Days of Our Lives indicate that the Horton residents will need extensive renovations and rebuilding. While questioning Clyde, Chad loses his composure, and Alex teams up with Kristen. On this episode of Days of Our Lives, Clyde threatens Everett and Chad, a drug bust turns deadly, Paulina gets alarming news, and Kristen and Alex form a win-win alliance. As soon as Kristen notices Alex walking into the square, she stops him. She informs him that Brady filled her in on all of Teresa's relapse. Enraged, Alex tells Kristen that Teresa simply slipped and begs her to go in peace. Brady seems to be concerned in Kristen in ways more than just her being his child's mother. Paulina informs Abe that her thoughts was calmed down by last night's actions when they wake up together in bed. He advises her to attempt to calm her thoughts once more. He leans in to give her a kiss as she encourages him to go for it. Clyde wakes up in his cell and reaches beneath his cot to retrieve his buzzing phone. Clyde yells that it wasn't the person's call to make, clearly upset by the news he just received. He promises to make those Sonsoff bitches realize his potential after hanging up. Police surround a lifeless body in a warehouse and stand next to a young man who is handcuffed. When Harris and Jada get there, Harris goes up to Officer Goldman, who gives him a troubled look. It was her first time firing a gun, let alone shooting someone, she told the detective. With a reassuring smile, he sends her off with another cop. Although Harris and Jada concur that it was a solid bust, they needed the dealer to be alive. Jada walks past Rafe to see how Goldman is doing. Harris becomes enraged and tells his boss that the deceased dealer was their direct conduit to Clyde. Harris needs the source but Rafe advises him to accept the victory of taking drugs off the street. To his dismay, Rafe is defending Goldman for a clean shot when Everett and Chad arrive. According to Harris, he called the journalists to prevent them from publishing Lucas's tale. Though he is furious, Rafe grudgingly accepts to collaborate with Chad and Everett. As he asks the commissioner, Everett records a video using his phone. Kristen waxes lyrical in the square about her and Brady's attachment to their child. If she ever considers getting back together with him, Alex queries. He urges her to return the ship to shore even though she claims it has sailed. She is aware that all he wants is for Brady to disappear so he can have Teresa all to himself. Alex acknowledges that he worries about Teresa constantly depending on him. Kristen feels that she can assist him. Jada questions a young male officer in the warehouse. According to his account, he saw a flash out of the corner of his eye as soon as he and Goldman arrived, and Goldman immediately took off after the perp. The dealer was dead when he heard two shots. Before assisting a shaken Golden, he wrote in his report where the suspect's gun was found. When Clyde walks into the jail visitor's room, Everett and Chad are seated. As Clyde teases him, Chad clenches his fists. He is then made fun of by Everett and Chad for how much money he lost in the narcotics bust. They are interested in hearing his account of events, but Clyde acts naive. 
since beginning his prison sentence for the horrific murder of Chad's wife, he maintains that he has been an excellent prisoner. He claims he can still see her pleading with him to spare her life while he is fixed on Chad. Chad goes at Clyde, but Everett stops him. Gathering himself, Chad announces that Clyde's terror is about to stop. Chad will be quite happy to announce on his newspaper's top page that he has lost his wealth and influence. Afterwards, Clyde would languish in jail, never to be seen again. Rafe confronts Harris in the warehouse for keeping him in the dark about Lucas and the media. All Harris had to do was ensure the attack proceeded without a hitch. Rafe retorts that something went wrong. According to Harris, Goldman was a distinguished marksman in her academy class, but Rafe asserts that shooting at the range differs significantly from shooting in a professional setting. She will now have to see a therapist before returning to her job. Harris thinks that everyone will need to pitch in. Rafe laments that it's impossible to predict the consequences once the piece is published. Subsequently, Jada talks about her first shooting experience with a moved Goldman. As Jada and Rafe reassure Goldman it was a clean shooting, the other officer arrives. That may be, but Goldman finds it difficult to accept ending a life. Jada reassures her that she will overcome this. Kristen claims in the square that everyone will benefit if she is more involved in Brady's life and he is less involved in Teresa's. Is she ready to return to Brady, Alex wonders. She is unsure. She may find it difficult to experience constant hurt, yet she will always have space in her heart for him. Kristen informs them that in order to reach their agreement, they will need to communicate frequently. He gives her a position at Titan, where she will work closely with Brady. She will think about it. He also advises her to add family sleepovers and extend Brady's visits. Paulina informs Abe about Johnny and Chanel's wedding while she's still in bed. She receives a call from the hospital while she's preparing. Paulina informed me that the tumor had gotten bigger and that her surgery will now take place at the end of this week after we hung up. She tells Abe, taking a deep breath, that she would not let her fear to overcome her. He gives her his word that they will overcome this together. Clyde cautions Everett in Statesville not to remember what he learned today. He would be devastated if anyone in their immediate vicinity in Salem suffered harm. Before Clyde departs, Everett and Chad issue their own threats, unfazed. Chad draws in a deep breath. This needs to end, he declares. Let's get started, Everett says. When Goldman tells Harris about her shooting at the warehouse, Harris affirms that she followed process. He informs Rafe that they will need to approach Clyde from a different direction because he will seek payment from someone when he learns about this. John hides a secret from Marlena, and EJ plays with Stefan next on Days of Our Lives. For more of the latest updates and behind-the-scenes secrets from Days of Our Lives, make sure to hit subscribe and ring that bell. Stay in the know with every new release.